Okay then, so in today's setup guide, we are taking a look at BizHawk. So if you're not sure what BizHawk is, it's a front-end system which runs many different emulators, supporting many different systems. So this is gonna be a fairly basic setup guide, but it's gonna give you a lot of information to get you up and running with BizHawk. I'm also gonna be showing you how to download RetroWatch cores in order to implement them and use them inside of BizHawk, how to configure files, and we're also looking at how to configure paths for your games to appear within BizHawk. So like I say, a lot of information is gonna be in this guide, but I tried to add the best I can to get you sorted. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, before I start today's BizHawk initial setup guide, just make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I cover every day on my channel, Just Jamie. Also helps out my channel a great deal too. So we're looking at BizHawk then and the actual latest version of this released a few months ago. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to leave the link in my description for this, is just head over to the BizHawk website and here we go. So first thing we need to do is just go near the download section just here. Windows users must download and run prerequisite installer. So we're just gonna left click on this one and like it says, this is a prerequisite. So unless you do this, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna download under assets, BizHawk prerequisites version 2.4.8 underscore one. If we just download this one a second, and we're going to end up with a zip folder. If we just open this one up, what I'm going to do is just very quickly drag this one onto the desktop and close this zip folder down. And here we go. So you're going to end up with a .exe. If you just double left click. And should you pop up, do you want to allow this app from unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Just press on yes. And here we go. So it looks very old school, but we're going to press OK. So what that's doing is just installing pretty much some packages which are essential for BizHawk to run. So once that's been installed, we're going to press on close. And then we can just delete this exe just here, which we just downloaded, which is, of course, the prerequisite exe. And that's it. So that's that part done. That's very simple. Next thing we're going to do is just head back over to the website for BizHawk. And we're going to go to release package links in release notes, including upcoming releases. Left click on this one. And we're going to download the latest version of BizHawk here, which is 2.9.1, as you can see. Left click. And at the top just here, we're going to download this for Windows. Okay, so we've also downloaded another zip folder. So if we just left click on this one, what we're going to do is just create a new folder on the desktop to put all this in. So right click anywhere on your desktop in an empty space. Just go down to new folder and you can call this what you want, but just out of simplicity, I'm going to call this one BizHawk. And I'm going to return to that zip folder where BizHawk is and just click on any one of these and press on Control and A together, which is going to highlight everything. Left click and drag everything into that BizHawk folder. And that's it. And whilst that's being dragged in, what I'm going to do is just take a look at BizHawk itself. So a lot of you will likely be asking what type of systems and what systems does BizHawk support? So straight out of the box with a little bit of configuration, if we just scroll down, it will tell you here, support platforms and platform specific documentation. So we got arcade machines, i.e. MAME. We got Apple II, Commodore 64, N64, Sega Saturn, uh, Virtual Boy, ZX Spectrum. So those are your core systems which are going to work pretty much straight out of the box, like I say. We can add different systems into BizHawk, but this is going to be a very basic setup guide today. So this is everything that we're going to run. And in this setup tutorial, we're going to look at Commodore 64 and we're also going to be looking at the N64. OK. So now everything's been extracted into that BizHawk folder. What we're going to do is open up that BizHawk folder 
And the first thing we need to do is grab some firmware and the easiest way to establish what type of firmware this front end needs is if we just go to the muhawk.exe just here, double left click. And that's going to open up a little window as you can see this is bizhawk so it's pretty much a no frill system and what we're going to do is go to config and if we go to firmwares and just here it's going to tell you all the firmware that bizhawk in the latest release that is requires and it's going to go into how these bios files should be named so say we load up a game for commodore 64 it's not going to work as it stands because C64, Commodore 64, requires these particular ROM files, which are firmware files. So back into the Bizhawk folder, let's just close Bizhawk. And we got a folder here called firmware. Now I found this firmware folder, and this is up to date with all of the files that we need in order to get some of these systems running through Bizhawk. So I'm gonna drag those into my Bizhawk firmware folder. Now, if I close this down and go back into BizHawk. And if I go back to config and firmware. Now, as we can see, since I put those firmware files that it's asking for into place in that firmware folder, most of these have now turned green and everything seems okay. So the first game I'm going to be testing out and setting up today for this is C64. And as we can see, C64 has got a file included in that firmware folder. So that's good to go. Okay, so back into the BizHawk folder, what we're going to do is create a new folder in here. So I'm going to right click new folder and I'm going to just simply call this folder ROMs. And within that ROMs folder, I'm going to create a specific folder for my Commodore 64 or C64 games. C64. So if you're creating this for something like Nintendo NES or anything else that BizHawk supports, I suggest you make in individual folders for those systems for your games to go into each folder so things are a little bit more tidy. So what we're going to do then is open up that C64 folder and I'm going to just drag in my two C64 games. And once they're in place, we're going to go to back and back again. And what we're going to do is just open up BizHawk again. So just remember, MUHawk opens up BizHawk. And what we're going to do next is just test out if C64 is running. Now we've got those firmware files in place. So if I go to file to open ROM, this is going to take us directly into that BizHawk directory. And from here, we'll see ROMs, the folder we just created. And here's my C64 folder. Now, remember, if you've got a NES folder, then just select on NES and then select your game C64. And just out of quickness, I'm going to select a dot, which is a cartridge image of a Commodore 64 game, which is a Pig Quest, which came out this year. And it's a wicked game. I totally recommend it. Okay. As you can see, we now got C64 folder appear in the Bizhawk directory. Now, if you're running specifically Commodore 64 through this, let me just remind you, Commodore 64 games predominantly work from port 2. So if we go to config, controllers, don't worry about player one too much. Like I said, most C64 games, for example, were programmed to work from port two, which is pretty much joystick port two on the C64 uh, computer. So we're gonna go to player two. Now I've got my Google Stadia pad connected to this. And what I'm gonna do is just define the bindings just here. So I'm gonna just left click on P2 up and press up on my D-pad on my Stadia and down and left and right and of course commodore 64 pretty much just had one fire button so just press any action button on your controller and that's it so we also got auto fire controls but i'm not going to bother with those uh what i'm going to do then is just go to And we can also make this into full screen just by double left clicking on the screen itself, on the window rather.
as you can see, that's running just fine. Like I say, I totally recommend Apic Quest. Such a great game. You can get that from ProtoVision. So what we can do then from here is also take a look at the C64 tab. Every system you choose and run through BizHawk is going to have its own particular tab just here. If we go to C64 then, settings, like I say, each system is going to have its own particular settings for the emulator running your games through BizHawk. So we got sync settings, for example, for Commodore 64. Now for this example, we got disk drive type. So if we just double left click on this, it's going to give us a range of different C64 disk drives to emulate. So uh, the 1541 and the 1541 Model 2 or Mark 2. So by far, in my personal opinion, the Model 2 Mark 2 uh, 1541 drive is probably the best. Uh, we also got tape drive type. So if we just pull this down, we've only got one option for this, which is the data set Commodore 1530. And we've also got SID type. So uh, SID is actual SID chip, the music chip in the Commodore 64. So you've got different revisions of the SID chip. If we pull this down, you'll get different revisions here. Uh, some Commodore 64 fans swear they can tell a difference between bread spin Commodore 64 chips and the later C64C uh, chips, but whatever. And we also got VIC type, which is your Commodore 64 video chip. So if we pull this down, we got PAL, NTSC, NTSC ALT, but whatever. The options are there if you like Commodore 64. Just go to OK. Now, if we go back to config, display, you'll be able to manipulate how the gameplay looks or the video image looks. So for example, uh, scale with filtering. So scale with filtering, we can add scan lines to this. And what I'm gonna do is just slightly raise this to say 72, 0.27% which is pretty random and if I go as you can see the game has now got scan lines on it if we go back to display once again uh, we can change the scaling filters to whatever we want personally I'm not a big fan of scan lines so I'm going to leave this to none and also under final filter we can add bilinear filter into this which takes away pixelation so checking out bilinear and as you can see it's not so pixelated and there's a slight filter to that and back to display again, I'm going to put filter back to none. Uh, we've got different aspect ratio options here, so you can play around with this. Uh, use custom size, I'm going to just type in, for example, 1920 by 1080, which is going to give it a customized aspect ratio. Well, a very good feature with Bizhawk is the ability to record your gameplay footage. To do this, simply go over to File, and if you go down to where it says Movie, Record Movie, just left click, and just here we can give it a file name. So I'm gonna just name this a Pig Quest or just use what is done by default. And if you really want to put your name in, just go to Author and just type in your name and Record From, Power On, or Now. So I'm gonna select Now. And I'm going to go back to file because I've now placed the part of the game I want to record. And if I go back to where it says movie, I'm going to stop. And as you briefly seen, it just gave us a little prompt at the bottom left of that window saying it's been recorded. So if we go into the movies folder in Bizwatch, you'll see that here is our file of Pig Quest and the file extensions to use in Bizwatch for recording your films or movies is dot bk2 so we're going to attempt now to play back that piece of gameplay footage that i've just recorded so file movie a movie and that's going to bring this little window up and we're going to then select the piece of footage that you've recorded so just double left click
recording your gameplay footage really is that simple. Okay, another cool feature with BizHawk is the ability to save and load state. So to do this, we're going to go to File. If we then go to Save State, we got a selection here of different save slots. So I'm going to use Save State 1. And then to load back that save, which I've just saved, is go to file again, load state, and obviously I've saved it to slot one. So just left click on one. So very simple stuff. Something else you can do within BizHawk is actually do screenshots. So file, and if we go down to screenshot, we're gonna select screenshot. And that is just generated a .png. So you might need screenshots for different projects you might be working on. Say you can't scrape a particular game if you're using a front end system such as Emulation Station or Retrobat, which I also cover on my channel. You can get your screenshots from this. So to find your screenshots, we're going to go up to the C64 folder that got created when we opened up our Commodore 64 game for the first time. And within the screenshots folder, you're going to find your screenshot.png just here. Here it is. Cool. So if we go back out again, reopen BizHawk. Let's say, for example, you don't particularly like the core that BizHawk is using for anything, really. Commodore 64, for example, we've got the ability to actually download cores from RetroArch and use them within BizHawk. So, for example, I've got RetroArch already installed on my laptop. Take a look inside the folders just here in the BizHawk folder. You're going to find the Retro, and we got cores inside. And for those of you who knows about RetroArch, you know where this is going. So what I'm going to do is open up RetroArch. And open up RetroArch itself. So RetroArch.exe. And I'm going to download a couple of cores from here to use in BizHawk. So I'm going to go to load core, download a core. And again, you can do this for pretty much any system that BizHawk supports. But as we know, I'm doing this for C64, which is my love and joy of life for a long time now. I love my Commodore. So I'm going to download Vice times 64 fast. And just remember, if you're new to RetroWatch, the hashtag just means that it's been installed and downloaded. And I'm also going to download Vice Times 64 SC Acura. And let's download C64 Super CPU, which is, of course, an expansion, which is costing a arm and a leg if you can actually obtain one of these but let's download the core for this and that's going to give us the ability to play games such as metal dust which uh yeah you need a super cpu for so they're downloaded so what i'm going to do is escape and escape again now we need to find those cores that we just downloaded so in your retro arch folder you're going to find cores and inside this folder you're going to find your course you just downloaded. Just copy those, make a copy of those. And back into your BizHawk Libretro course folder, it's just literally a case of pasting those into place. And if we open up BizHawk again, so emuhawk.exe, so to implement those cores into BizHawk itself and actually use those cores, just go to config. And from here, we're going to go down to preferred cores set libretro core and this should then open up your libretro course folder in bizhawk so i'm going to just double left click on the vice time 64 sc now if we go back to open the game so open rom and i'm obviously going to be picking my pig quest game again which is in my roms folder i created earlier c64 a pig quest <laughs> to check this core is actually working now, what we can do is go to File, Open Advanced, and under Current Core, you should see your core. So this is the one I've just downloaded from RetroArch and open up this game with. This is Device X64SC. So obviously different cores have different abilities.
I just recommend saving everything for each particular system. So I've set up a lot in Commodore 64 through BitHawk. So to save configurations, we're just going to go to config and save the configuration or even save config as. I'm going to do this one as save config as. And we can name this file name anything we want, but we must add the dot .ini on the end. So I'm going to rename this C64 and keeping that dot .ini intact. So C64. And it's now copied those particular settings that I put in place for C64. Okay, and finally, like I said at the start of the video, I'm going to show you how to operate N64. So it's going to be very similar to what we've already done with C64. So open up Bizzle folder again, and now we've got the ROMs folder created, and we've got C64 inside. I'm going to create another folder, right click, new folder, N64. And inside N64, I am going to right click and just paste an N64 game in place. Now, if we go into Bizhawk again, this time I'm going to go to File, Open ROM, and that's obviously going to take us back into our Bizhawk directory. So, ROMs, N64, and here's my N64 game, double left click. Now, like I've been saying, on every system you run through Bizzle, you'll get an individual tab appear. As we know, C64 has had one. Now we've got N64. So, plugins for N64, if you fancy playing N64 through Bizzle, we got lots of different settings. So, if we go to plugins just here, uh, N64 systems, or rather emulators, rely on what's known as plugins, which gives us visual uh, appearances. So. For example, Active Video Plugin is a N64 plugin. Um, we also got a Rice plugin. So each one of these plugins for N64 is going to give us a different effect or a different appearance of the game. We also got Video Resolution just here to use. And if I just go to say. Obviously, the controller isn't working for this, and as we can see at the bottom, it says Mupen 64 Plus, which is the core that Bizzle is using to run this game. So, very briefly, take a look at the controller settings for N64. If we go to Config, Controllers, and we got Normal Controls, Console, Player 1. So, just like the C64 configuration, we can just left click. On each one of these and just map it out with our controller and just remember to save everything So as you can see, controller is working fine. And also under N64, we can also adjust display settings just like any other system that you emulate through this system. So same options we got here as we just had for C64, really. And just remember to save. So config and save config as. So I'm going to save these as N64. So when it comes to load up a particular setting for a particular system, I know which file is which just by renaming it to say N64 or C64. So let me give you an example of this. If I go to display and I just, for example, uh, take away the custom settings I use for C64 for the aspect ratio, let's just put something random in uh, like 800 by 600. If I then go to OK this, and then just save. Now, if I quit out of this game and I open up Commodore 64 again, so just close ROM. Now, this time I'm going to open up Commodore 64 just to load back up my previous settings, which aspect ratio I customize is 1920 by 1080. If I open ROM, ROM C64 Pick Quest. Now I'm going to load up those previous video settings by going to config and I'm going to go to load config and I'm going to go to load config from 
And if I scroll down, I find my c64.ini, and that's obviously my uh, set and save file that I made for c64. Double left click. And now to put this to the test that we know that this is actually loaded up those settings again, which I set earlier, we can do this by going to config, display, and as you can see, as I altered this earlier on 1920 by 1080p, my settings have now reappeared again. Awesome. And that's it for my BizHawk setup guide today. So a lot of information there and hopefully I've covered most of the essential aspects of BizHawk. As you know, I've showed you configurations for C64 and N64. And as I've also been saying that by and large, most systems that BizHawk supports will use those same type of settings. So anyways, if you enjoyed today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like. It really helps my channel out a great deal. Plus it gets you retro emulation content as I release it, which is pretty much every day. Also, feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.